So if you have one of those classy hats, you're ready for today's video. Well today, we're going to color grade like this. Hat off. <laughs> How's it going people? Welcome back to another new episode of The Scenes and thank you for tuning in again. So about a week ago, I uploaded the Gears episode 21st and I think the B-roll of that episode is iconic. It's orange, yellow, kind of faded film look. I love that. Even though it has classic film look, it doesn't look old. So today I'll show you guys my secret of color grading with orange and yellow classic film look. And pass the microphone to the guy who does the color. So as always, let's breathe the new life into the footage. Hey guys, welcome back. So first thing first, this scene was shot on Sony a 3 and Sony 28 70mm f3.5 kit lens and also this is S-Log2. So basically this scene is pretty normal, you know, because the gear we use is not special, it's just a kit lens. Also the situation is just 7am, just you know, one mediocre morning. But what I'm gonna do from now changes everything. I'm gonna turn this footage into a fancy one. So I'll start off with the base. What I mean by base here is a basic uh, exposure, contrast, and saturation. Now this is S log to very flat image. So I'm gonna give it back light and color information. Okay, first contrast. Well, you can use this curve making like S curve like this, like lower the shadow and bring up the highlight, something like this. But I am too lazy for that. I'm just gonna use this easy contrast right here. So just bring this up until I get black and white clear. But don't overkill. Leave both of shadow and highlight nice and clean, but make it contrasty. But now it's a little bit harsh. For that, this pivot is very useful. This makes contrast less harsh. As you gain this pivot, the contrast will be more gentle. So I'm going to turn this up a little bit. Good. And for next step, I'm using those primary wheels. So now when we look at the parade, highlight is too much and shadow is not enough. You know, I want to place those highlights at around like a eight or nine hundred and the mid tone at the you know, six or seven hundred and the shadow at around like a hundred. Well, this is something like a universal rule in my color grading. Okay, so I'm going to bring the total exposure down by using offset. So just bring this down like this. Okay, like this. But still, the gain is too much, so I'm gonna bring this down. Like this. But instead of it, I'm getting some creamy mid-tone by bringing this gamma up like this. Much better. And bringing the lift down to adjust shadow. But still, to me, the sky is too much. So I'm gonna use this highlight to reduce the light of sky. So now the exposure looks good, but I think I want more strong and punchy shadow. So using this Lux shadow, gain some strong black in it. But bring this low range down a little bit to avoid crushing. Okay, so now the exposure and the contrast look good. The balance is right. So next, moving to saturation. In general, people do color correcting, which makes the image back to normal color for later color grading. But I'm skipping that. I'm gonna make some kind of a base color, a base vibes as a preparation for orange yellow film look, which I'm gonna do later. So first, gain saturation until I get color back. Maybe 75 is good. So here's one of the keys in today's video, it's the temperature and tint. So those can add orange or blue and green or magenta easily to the image, but the color movement is huge like this. So I think it's not good for fine adjustment. I'm using this for base color at the beginning phase of color grading. So I'm going to shift this temperature to positive, which is uh, orange direction like this and move the gain toward the red to get extra orange feel also shift this gamma toward the red to reduce blue and green but reduce the red by moving this left to green side 
Great. So now the base color is pretty much done. I mean, I can export with like this. But why don't we give it some more classic film look? Yes? Let's do it. Okay, so before you deep dive into that, why don't we take a really short break right here? Maybe five seconds. Five seconds, right? Okay, let's continue. So from now, I'm going to actually give it some film, creative, iconic look. But don't be afraid to break the skin tone because we're gonna fix it later. Okay, first I want orange and yellow. So I'm gonna use log wheels. So first I'm going to shift this mid-tone toward uh, between red and yellow, all the way up like this, all the way up. like this okay now it's already making a difference okay this is turn off on off on off it's getting orange yellow feel and as you notice this white t-shirt also become orange but i want to maintain white on it so using this highlight bringing this down to blue Okay, now it's close to pure white, but don't make it like 100% pure white because it's not gonna match with total atmosphere of this image. And next is also one of the keys in this video. So now the image looks good, but I think it's flat. I want a more gradation in the color. So I'm giving it blue and green in shadow. So as always, using this log shadow, shift this tour between blue and green. Very good. I can turn off, turn on off on off on so now the image has classic orange feel but also it's a modern look because of this blue and green shadow but apparently yes i broke the piece of skin tone well it's too saturated in a bad way i want more natural white and pink on it so what i'm gonna do is as always using qualifier to select only skin tone but personally forehead or nose are easy to pick just click on it and drag it and select the skin tone, skin color, this orange, yellow, and use luminance, saturation, and hue. Okay, good, pretty much it. But now, also, I selected stuff I don't need, like this wall, but let's leave it as okay. I'm not gonna be crazy about it. And then blow this out, like blend those each other. Okay, so now whatever you change in this node applies to only skin tone, which I just selected. Okay, so moving to hue versus option. So first, I'm going to start off with saturation. Bring this red and orange a little bit up. Well, this can apply to other options, but don't go over this second line as much as possible because it's gonna break the whole piece of color balance. And next, luminance. Well, the color is good, but I think it's too deep right now. I mean, it's too strong, so I'm gonna light them up. So bring this red up a little bit and also yellow up. Like a higher than this red. Good. Now it has great a red and yellow gradation in a face and those colors become more lighter and then moving to hue bring this red up just a tiny a little bit can you notice just tiny a little bit really small difference but skin can get human natural pink in it by doing this if it's too much do the opposite okay let's turn off on off on okay great so now the image is getting close to the finale in the next step i'm gonna use mask to give it some feel okay so this section the mask section will be the last step be patient almost there so i want to make her stand out more so i'm gonna darken around her okay so moving to this mask tool this window tool and select circle mask and make a shape like this and blur this out and invert. So now whatever you do applies to only outside of this mask. And moving to curve and lower the exposure. Just like this. Turn off, on, off, on, off, on. So now it's much easier to focus on her. And at the last, I'm going to give her face extra light. So moving to next node, and again, this window tool, select circle mask and cover this face. And again, blow this out. But this face is moving, right? So we gotta track it. So using this tracker and go back to point where you want to start to track. 
around here and adjust the mask like this and hit the play just hope it goes well ah damn it <laughs> it's not working well and then it stops what we're gonna have to do is go back to i guess this point so from now i have to do this frame by frame so select this frame and hit the right arrow key on your keyboard and go forward 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 and also move this mask move mask forward forward move mask forward forward move mask just repeat this until it gets perfect okay so i just finished tracking Ah, that was whew, a lot of works. So I'm moving to this curve again and bring this up a little bit. So now her face is getting extra light. And also I'm going to lower this mid and detail to make her face more creamier. Okay, let's see what we did. Turn off, on, off, on. Now her face stands out much more better. It's nice and clean, creamier. All right, so let's turn off all of this back to zero and I'll send you to the journey of all processes I did. I'll see you guys again at the world full of colors. Okay, I am pretty happy about this. So now my job is done like this. I'll give this back to you. Okay, welcome back. I hope you guys had a wonderful journey out there. If there is something helpful, I am more than happy. So as you know, that scene was shot on A7 III and its kit lens, but it doesn't look so. Important thing is how you do. You got your camera and lens, you have minimum requirements for film making. So now you're also in a game, no time to say, I don't have good gears. Use what you can use, 100%. Maximize your filmmaking potential with what? I am here for that. Okay, this is it. If you have any questions about this video, don't hesitate to leave the comment below. And if you have any requests for next scenes, also leave the comment below. So today's topic is pretty much it. And thank you for watching this video. If you like this scene, show me a thumb and uh, hit the subscribe. And I'll see you in the next episode. <laughs>